So Paul, we just realized that the way you essentially float or have that experience in space is through free fall. You have enough speed to go around the Earth. There's actually a technical term for this, right? We call this an orbit. Yes, sometimes it's called free fall, but it's an orbit, which is, you can think of it in two different ways, both of which are correct. One way to think of an orbit is that you are indeed falling towards the Earth, but you've got enough sideways speed that by the time you fall, the Earth's out of the way. And because there's not very much air, not quite zero, but not very much, you can keep on falling and falling and falling. In fact, in a low Earth orbit, that little bit of air will eventually slow you down enough that right. you'll trash up to the Earth. And we're going to talk about this in a lot more detail because this affects how we have to actually put these things in space. But if you're further up where there's even less, then you could certainly continually fall around the Earth for billions of years without so, falling So depending down. on your height, essentially, can affect how well you orbit the yeah. Earth. That's one way to think about it. The other way to think about it is in terms of centrifugal force. Okay. You know, when you're yep. driving in a car and someone turns a corner, it feels like you're flung out to the that's side. That's right, that's right. And you can think of it as the same way, that as you're going around the Earth in a circle, there's going to be a centrifugal force outwards, yep. and that will balance the gravity pulling you inwards, so you can keep going in the same so speed. So we, there is an outward force pushing on us, but it's equal to the force being pulled towards the Earth, and it balances out. Yeah, and these are two different ways of thinking about the same thing, and they're both correct. Okay. So what this means is you can stay in space, but you can't be stationary. You, you have can't to just always, step off a building. You, you always have to, have to be moving. And you have to move in pretty damn fast, sideways. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the right speed, it allows you to keep going forever or for a very long time in a circle. And that's what we call an orbit. Now, you said that gravity falls off as one over R squared. So the further away we are, it falls off as the square of that distance. So that means that when you're in a low Earth orbit, you're only just above the thickest part of the atmosphere, you have to go pretty fast to overcome the gravity because the gravity is pretty strong. Yep. When you go further away, you, the gravity is a bit gravity. weaker, yep, yep. so you don't need to move so quickly. Also, uh, it takes you longer to fall to Earth, so you've got more time to miss the Earth. So depending on where you go in orbit will affect on what that speed you need to maintain to stay in orbit. Yes, so a low Earth orbit, um, something like this, you go around the Earth, it turns out about every 90 minutes. So that's traveling pretty fast. But when you're on a much further out orbit, it's much slower. A particularly famous orbit is a geostationary orbit, yep. which is so far out that it takes 24 hours to go around the Earth. This is important because it means you appear to hover over one point on Earth. Which is why we chose that, because it's a certain height that, as they said, the Earth is 24 hours. So the general rule is to stay in space, because there's still gravity in space, you can't sit still. You have to go in an orbit, which is often a circular motion. Yep. And if it's a low orbit close in where the gravity is strong, you have to go very quickly. And as you go further out, it gets slower and slower and slower. Yep. But there's another problem here. I mean, what happens if you go at the wrong speed? We've said that if you go at just the right speed, you'll stay in a circle, you'll miss the Earth as you fall, or there's just enough centrifugal force to balance gravity. Yeah, what if you go too fast or too slow? Yes, and people often think of orbits as being like the straight and narrow, the path of justice. You know, one step off and you'll go to your doom. Um, but let, let's take this object here. It's, yep. it's, it's, um, let's imagine it's going in a nice circular orbit. Okay. And let's slow it down a bit. Okay. So instead of firing it at the speed, we'll fire it at maybe a few percent slower. And here's what happens. You see that it still orbits the Earth, but the orbit is no longer a circle. Yeah, it's kind of become, the, the shape is changing in the way it's moving around. Well, what will happen is it'll start, it's not going fast enough for centrifugal force to balance gravity, so it'll start approaching the Earth. Uh -huh. As it goes closer to the Earth, it'll speed up, yep. and then it'll whip around the other side of the Earth really fast and then come back out again. But then it will still be pulled back, so it's kind of doing this egg shape, almost oscillation going around. Now if we make it go faster than the narrow speed, it'll now move further away from the Earth. So once again, it's doing an elongated shape, and that's elongated the other way. Instead of being shorter at the bottom, it's longer at the bottom. That's right. So these are called elliptical orbits. And so generally, if you don't have quite the right speed, you still are in orbit. It's just no longer a circular orbit. It's an orbit that's so-called elliptical. It's a distorted, uh, kind of squashed circle. And there actually are benefits to having a non-circular orbit for some objects that we'll talk about later. That's right. So. Uh, of course, if you slow your speed too much, then the bottom part of the orbit, you might hit the Earth's atmosphere. And then crash. And, then the and if you go too fast, you could potentially have too much of that forward force, so you actually never come back towards the Yes, yeah, so if you make it faster still, you see that the orbit goes further and further out, and eventually you hit a critical speed, the escape velocity, in which case it turns from an ellipse into a parabola. And you and it skip. flies out into space. And if you're going even faster, still it turns into a graph like this, which is called a hyperbola. Yep. Interesting mathematical note, these are all what are called conic sections. If you take a cone and you slice it at different angles, if you slice it horizontally, you get a circle. 
at an angle you get back into an ellipse, more of an angle you get a parabola, and vertically you get a hyperbola. That's right. So the mathematics of slicing cones is actually the, the same pattern as these different orbits you can get. And these different orbits, we actually do see other ways that we can use them because every object in space has gravity. That's right. Um, so the crucial thing is, if you're balancing such a few forces of gravity perfectly, you get a nice circular orbit. If your speed is a bit wrong, you get a typically elliptical orbit, in which case some of your orbit you'll dip close to the planet or the Earth and be going fast, and sometimes you go further away and slow. And if you're going fast enough, you might escape all the way on a parabola, parabolic or hyperbolic orbit. And shoot off into space. <laughs>